Hello there, and welcome to episode 7 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. In this one, we're going to develop our city a little bit further. In the last episode, we have set up Law and Doctors. So, I have now a guard post and a dungeon where all the criminals of our city will get arrested into. And I have also set up a, phys a physician's workshop. We have also introduced a steady system of imports in the last system in the last episode. So we're now proud owners of many different items and we're also exporting by now a couple of items more. So for today it's going to be a lot about where to next. So there's two different ways that we could go now and uh, at any point of the game your city always has several ways to evolve into so there's one way and probably the one that i'm choosing and that's technologically advancing now towards weaving and tailoring with weaving and tailoring we can provide clothing for our cities for our citizens and textiles for our citizens which makes our entire populace a lot more happy. The other option we would have would be to hardcore funnel or technological advancements now into the research of tombs, build a crypt and receive an explosion of new uh, citizens because for some reason the moment your city has a tomb people are totally crazy about your city. <coughs> I'm just uh, I just want to emphasize that at a certain point you have various uh, different ways of, of going into the situation. With uh, the Cretonians, you also have another nifty little trick. They have a need for harmony. Um, almost no other species has that, except for the Tilapi. But uh, most other species have a very low sense of harmony. And why is that interesting? Because you can learn to plant down green space. And that's a very uh, cheap technology and it allows you to plant trees in your city. So what we're going to do for today is we're going to turn ourselves into a sheriff. Good thing about being a sheriff is you gain even more bartering power. That's amazing. We also have access to nobility, but not this episode. Nobility I hope I can cover it in the next episode already, but this will receive pretty much its own uh, its own section because it's a little bit of uh, preparation necessary and a slight more uh, a slightly higher bonus in happiness. Wonderful, isn't it? So bartering power is and so far really really wonderful because we are living off of exports quite a lot and it does make quite the difference to see that or goods getting more pricey and pricey. Sadly, uh, the bartering skill doesn't lower the um, import prices yet. I really hope that this is a thing that might get implemented in the future. I would really, really uh, like that. So anyways, the um, promotion actually distracted me from what I wanted to do, and that's employing more scientists, because, you know, we will need more science for that. In the meantime, we're going to put up green space. I just want to show you that you have really many different ways of getting your city, your citizens happier and uh, things like that. So we're finding that not in this tab, but here in the decorations tab. So trees, they, they work like many things. You can press E and you make the tree larger or smaller. We're, we're going to we're going to plant down some larger trees here so let's plant down one here probably here one at the end of the road and the wonderful thing about trees is they seriously only cost you a little bit of timber most species don't uh, get a uh, big hype from harmony but that's one for me, big, big benefit of the Cretonian species because, you know, you literally can turn lumber into happiness this way. And not every species has that advantage, gotta say. So we're also going to cover um, the, uh, the, the life with different species in your city, of course. I haven't touched that subject yet. It has been mentioned in the comment section. Um, it, I, I want to go there when, when the city is uh, at a point where it's worth talking about that. 
right now I personally don't want to uh, do so. So while we're waiting a little bit, let's check this out. And you can see the uh, meter for harmony is rising. And while that's rising, the happiness of our cities, citizens is also rising. So basically those trees are really, really valuable for your, uh, for your people. There's, uh, that's hundred research points and for Crotonians, a super powerful thing. You might even uh, want to think about using that very, very early on. I just don't, didn't want to introduce that method in the very beginning of the game because I, I really want to keep these tutorials in an order that they are digestible for a beginner and power playing around with the uh, characteristics of a species. I didn't find that to be beginner, beginner, beginner compatible. I just meant to explain. So we're going to set on up a big fat cotton farm now. It is time. 30 farmers or 31 and uh, we're, we're going to enjoy ourselves with that. It's really, really important that we set this up before we set up the weaver, because no cotton, no fabric, no fabric, uh, no, no weaver. Well, all right, that's, yeah, that's pretty much true. So we're going to wait a moment for the 250 tech points. I think the weaver cannot transform leather into fabric. I was just wondering, but I don't think that's the case. So we're going to wait a moment. We do have enough scientists for that employed. I do know that. They just uh, they jo just go uh, up and down with their over the course of the time. So let's check this out. We have now the weaver. Mm. We also need. Well, we have storage three thousand sixty. That's okay. So just wanted to make sure that we have storage space for the cotton as well. So we're going to set up a weaver's workshop here down the road. Let's make it happen here. Oh, wait a sec. We can also do something fun like that. Here we're going to shear the, uh, the walls of another building, you see. It doesn't build a new wall here because it already has a wall. I hope this building is not going to be too narrow. I see a certain risk in that, but no, luckily not. So it's the it's the usual approach, you know, where we're going to fill this place with looms like crazy. And once we are around the 50 employees mark, I'm pretty sure that we cannot fit in that many of these because we're going to need room for the auxiliaries. There's uh, this workshop is a little bit small, I, I admittedly, but uh, well, it came with the topography, you know. The river is just so close. <laughs> Here we go. So we're uh, slowly reaching the higher percentile again. And this place will now transform cotton into fabric for us. And that's going to be a major step forward because this way, not only will we be able to produce clothing, which will in return make even more people happy, we will also have access to the uh, option to, uh, well, how to put it. I just wanted to add in a few weird uh, corners here. Um, we're also going to have the option to provide housing to, um, no, fabric to our housing. So our people will be, in that regard, also happier. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's how you change the shape, as you see there. These uh, weirdnesses that I'm adding are making the, the room more and more organic. But here it's making the room less organic, so... Basically, the more square-shaped your room turns, the less organic it feels. So, the more of these weird little uh, niches I add in, the better. So, it even applies to the interior of the room. So, I just wanted to uh, showcase a little bit that you can work with the uh, roundness meter this way a little bit. So, I'm going to do this like that. So, that's one damn odd shaped place now we're going to 
Clap in some more looms now that we know that this place is going to look like that. Pretty positive that we will have some auxiliary looms here. So this is not only looking fun, it's also way more effective than a, a, a building that's not uh, crammed in like that, as you see there. The only thing we'll have to take care of is the fact that we have a slight instability there. But uh, yeah, I love Protonian cities for that. They they are they they turn out to be really crazy looking places because the organic meter is just provoking extremely chaotic builds like you see there. So finally, hundred person. We just need to bring in a little bit more stability, and that's our wonderful odd shaped weaver. You know, gosh, this thing looks go looks ghastly. So, I forgot the storage. There we go. Wait a sec, we can actually slap in the larger storage back there. Here we go. Ghastly looking uh, weaver. Also requiring quite a lot of metal, so this is going to drain my stockpiles. But it doesn't matter that much, because we have a lot of work to do. We need to bring up the cotton farm and we're going to wait this out. Since we have the metal now on imports, technically if everything works on out as it should, the materials should be gathered towards our um, city all by themselves. In the meantime, we're, we're just going to plant down some more trees, you know? It's just uh, very, very powerful to have some trees in between. Let's see. This way we can lure a couple of extra people into the city. Just try to make sure that the zones that these uh, trees exude don't uh, clump together all at one place. Ideally, your, your folks like to see some harmony at all the corners widespread over the city. This way the uh, AI perceives it as, uh, as accessible for everybody. It's really about how how often they see a tree when they traverse the city, I think. If I understood the system correctly, that is. If not, feel free to correct me in the comment section. I'm just trying to do my best and uh, to understand this uh, wildly deep game, you know. Alright, so let's see. These trees... Let's check on out the environment. As soon as the harmony meter, by the way, is at 100%, you can't stop doing these tricks, you know. You won't get more than 100%, but uh, the larger the city grows, the higher the demand of harmony is, uh, is going again, so. With a city that's mostly consisting out of Cretonians and or, for example, Tilapi, you are well off building with a lot of uh, harmony-inducing uh, items there. It's a neat little trick that I like to use while I'm waiting for materials or workers. And here we go, we have already the metal um, imported. Our city is going quite strong. The uh, money is flowing into our purses really, really fast in that regard. I'm, I'm positively surprised. So we have the cotton farm completed. I already assumed as much since there's a wild case of homelessness happening. So I'm just uh, bringing up 15 cotton farmers to this place because we don't want to uh, overstress this here. So I control left click the houses to pick up the blueprints there because this is a nice and lazy way of getting the job done. And uh, now we're just uh, we just have to wait on out for the weaver. And as you see there are those trees just planting down those trees has helped our city tremendously in accessing more citizens. And we are not even at the end of a meter. By the way, other species that don't have this meter, they usually have instead a need for awe or a need for dread. But uh, all in all, awe is uh, the next thing in the list. You can also unlock... Um, here, monuments, so that's much harder to get. The other thing I forgot to mention there is, uh, and that's also important for our dudes, is lighting. Lighting is something practically every species enjoys, except for a couple of ex uh, exceptions. There's always an exception for every rule in this game, it seems. But uh, lighting can be brought up by 
slapping up torches. Torches are always consisting out of metal, so they are the next more costly variant to make environments more beautiful. And this whole thing that I'm uh, yapping about here is one of the main reasons why I think Cretonians are a very good beginner species. It's much easier to plant trees rather than to uh, plant down torches because metal is just so much harder to come by. All right. So the homelessness is subsiding because we're we got enough uh, housing over there, and our weaver is also finished. So our weaver's workshop is going it, it is going to accept a whopping amount of seventy two people. <laughs> we are not any close to that right now. We don't even have any cotton in our um, in our possession. So let's not go too crazy about that and wait it out for a moment. The other thing that's now important to note is the janitor. As you see there, the janitor's mesh grid is now reaching its end. The road I put up here is totally red. That means it's already deteriorated. What we're going to do next is we're going to set on up a, another janitor and it's going to live right somewhere here. That's one thing that annoys me a little bit about the game that you cannot see the mesh grids of uh, of the janitors while you're placing down the next janitor. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but here, um, when you click that dude, you see the coverage, but when you have it on the cursor, you don't see the coverage anymore. You just have to live through that. I hope this will get fixed in future versions of the early access. Now then, we, was, we must look for one thing again. How's the food situation? It's good. So also noticeable, we have a really huge overproduction of grain. That's wonderful. So let's set on up a, another um, export depot at this place. Let's just make that two already. So we can start, start selling or overproduction of grain. I technically try to uh, sell every overproduction that comes around because that's just uh, for me the most powerful way of uh, managing my, my goods. So once we are over 4,080 pieces of grain, we're right now exporting the rest. Grain is not really valuable, but it's also not, wor not worthless, you know? So it is pretty much okay. Now then, next step, we have that weaver opened, but we don't have any fabric um, chests assigned. So let's change that as well. Here we go. So the next important thing is the tailor. So let's unlock the tailor and build one while we're at it. So we're going to bring the tailor's workshop somewhere down here. So the tailor will take the fabric that we're producing and transform it, transform it into clothing. Alternatively, you can also produce armor at the tailor's workshop but this is not what we're looking for today. So here we go. One stabilizing bench, you already know the drill. Couple of workbenches, the standard issue there. So here we go, 40 people able to work in there. That's good enough for my taste. I'll leave that up to the uh, dear uh, viewer to decide for themselves how how large you want to make your workshops. Don't make them too small, don't make them too insanely large at the same time, but I think uh, this is an okay thing. So another thing we should right, right now do is get into the expand room uh, thingy and uh, oopsie, add in those funky little notches there. That's, uh, okay, that's destroying these, sad. And as you see there is uh, the, these little niches, they're adding in the exotic shape the Protonian does prefer. And uh, at some point we are at a 100% organic shape. Wonderful. Organically shaped buildings. All right, so it's again 207 pieces of metal. Luckily we are importing all that. But uh, it's, it's going to take a while until this uh, project is done again. But uh, all in all, that's just uh, the way it goes. All right. 
So a, a second janitor's uh, place down here will also help the mitigation of the degradation here. So degrading uh, buildings are all in all just working worse, you know. And as you see here, there's uh, always an icon on it. It needs metal to be fixed. And uh, therefore, keep your materials available. You cannot think to work with a building that's made out of a material that you're not constantly importing or producing. That's a very, very important rule for Songs of Six. Because otherwise the, the buildings will degrade and uh, ultimately go to... go to destruction. So... Here I'm right now just waiting for the first bigger harvest of cotton to come on in before I'm starting to employ weavers. I'm also not picking up the um, people sitting here waiting for uh, waiting for the next migration. So there we go. As you see here, we are cultivating quite a noisy um, uh, neighborhood here. So we have to check on out where we're going to put up housing. This area back there is looking really, really good for that. So we're going to start to build some housing complex on over here. It's really important that you uh, that you think about where your uh, where your apartments will go are going to be before these problems uh, before this turns into a problem. You know. There we go. This is only a beginning, but I need to watch how the noise map will look like with this uh, tailor here. All right. And uh, at this point, it's worth noting, we are still importing every little scrap of metal that we're using. We're not producing our metal by ourselves. Technically, you could, of course, have set up an industry that's making this all by themselves. But as we see here, I'm not even able to um, su to sustain um, the charcoaler right now, worker-wise. And that sucks. Oh, we have another case of murder in town. Damn. Well, if this happens, this makes the people slightly more unhappy, you know, who's surprised about not about that. But uh, beyond that, there's uh, as long as there's some place to bury the person, that doesn't have a too heavy impact on, on your city's uh, development. All right. So, as you see, metal's empty, but so is our wallet, so it's going to come forward to us and that's the beautiful thing when you have set up your industries accordingly you have a constant flow of money and you are able to set yourself up in like that also the first uh, cotton is coming in so we're going to get ourselves 10 weavers employed and uh, get ourselves also some more people in, into the town so let's check out the environment meter so our work here it didn't really change anything about the the roundness how so that's mostly because nobody uh, is so far working in the in the buildings that have the new characteristics but uh we, we're going to check out the roundness meter once the people here have worked here for a while they love it so we have now a uh, much, much higher amount of tailors here sitting than we want to. And here's the thing. Clothing is standardly made out of leather. So uh, you can produce clothing as soon as you have a hunter. But I'm personally preferring to produce my clothing exclusively out of uh, fabric because that's much more efficient. And I am, well, what can I say? I'm a big fan of the um, of the principle that leather is one of the most powerful export goods for the early game, which produces just enough money to get your economy kickstarted, and I love that about uh, about the leather export. You can use the leather for clothing, but I can't say so much 
you really will need a really huge amount of uh, of, of leather to, to keep your people clothed. So, fabric. Check this out. Fabric has an insane sales price. Isn't it awesome? But also, fabric is very, very valuable for our own case, so we're only going to export the last little bit. 10-person spoil rate, so we export exactly the spoil rate. Uh, that's, my, that's my typical approach if I don't have a... Um, interest in, in making this stuff a real trade good. So here, well, the tailors are missing uh, the leather because we'll, we don't, we export all the leather right away, which we should stop doing at this point, actually. It's a good moment now to pause from this uh, behavior. Let's see, how's the spoil rate of leather? 10%. So we're going to sell only the last 10% of our leather. It's not necessary anymore to sell it all away. We do earn our money well enough and it's going to be a-okay. So we'll go and now let's research the clothing producing out of uh, fabrics and most importantly assign some crates for the clothing. There we go. So clothes! Hell yeah, what a concept. It's, it's extremely, uh, it's an extreme step forward once you have a steady access to clothing for your people. So, let's check this out. And, uh, well, the roundness meter isn't going up. I'm surprised about that. I thought it would work like that. I gotta admit, I, I was tr I'm trying to cheese the AI for the first time like that, and, uh... Therefore, if it doesn't work, we're going to construct proper, uh, properly round-shaped rooms, but it's really a pain in the, in the rear to do so. Anyways, so what's happening to our folks right now is quite simple. They gain access to clothing, and that's making them happier. As you see here, the uh, access meter is going up, and that's making people happy. And at the same time, you can see fabric goes in, Clothing goes in, and the the meters they drop to the bottom right after uh, they uh, they fill up. That's because our people are starved. They are trying. Everybody is trying to get one suit of clothing on themselves, and um, these deteriorate over time. So basically, your people will require new sets of clothing every now and then. It's, uh, those woodcutters, man. And that means you have, therefore, at this point, once you supply your people with clothing, you also have a steady demand of clothing at the same time. These two things go hand in hand. Once you do the, the uh, one thing, you do the other thing as well. But uh, at the same time, once they all have their suit of clothing, this sh stuff should start stockpiling at some point. It'll take a while, though. But the bonus about that is uh, we're uh, we're gaining happiness out of that, eventually. Right now, not that much, but uh, it's getting there. Also, we do see a decline in food, so we gotta be careful about that. But luckily, this ain't much of a big deal. We're just going to export only 50% of our bread production at that point, and that should already raise uh, raise the meter a little bit higher. Right now, my my city is exporting uh, like crazy, and that's something we are going to change. All right, so yeah, as you see here, this meter is slowly filling, and slowly the happiness is uh, gravitating upwards here again as well. It's a little bit uh, irregular in the development, and that's why I'm not hiring new immigrants at this point, because, you know, it's a, uh, it's a back and forth motion. We, we do have only so and so much cotton per year to process, and uh, before I hire anybody, I want to make sure that we have enough clothing for everybody, so. Tailoring and all that stuff is a little bit of a finicky business because you have to balance out to a two-step production cycle. You have to balance out the, the cotton production and the, uh, and the fabric production, and that's a little bit more demanding than, uh, than the previous things. So I'm amping up the amount of cotton farmers here a bit, 
because I feel like this will get us somewhere. And at the same time, let's make sure that we're going to have another um, trade post here for cotton as well. Because, you know, everything which we can overproduce, we will overproduce eventually. And it's a shame to... Uh, to waste that. Also, our pasture is by now brim-filled with piggies. So, as you see here, this place is now a real big producer, so we can we can make we, we can value ourselves or we can see ourselves happy about that as well. So cotton exports, let's check it out. We're certainly not going to export 100%. Shoo shoo. So spoiler rate 10%. So it's the same shtick as usual. As soon as we start overproducing, we're going to export that. Right now, I don't want to touch anything. I'm just going to let the time fast forward a bit because I want to see if our production of clothing and fabric eventually will stabilize each other out or where they'll end. Because right now, this takes a while until you have the proper um, balancing. I don't have enough workers to uh, just uh, click on auto-employ, which I'd love to do. As you see here, everywhere I'm a little bit... Uh, I'm a little bit short on, on on hands that's uh but that's a typical thing in the mid game don't don't be uh don't be worried about that that's normal so at this point it seems nigh impossible for our dudes to uh, provide clothing for everybody but at the same time another another wonderful thing is actually happening we have a pretty nice increasing amount of happiness there that's because the more clothing we produce better the situation will grow and all in all we're also constantly earning money on the on the uh, in the background so things are developing quite nicely and that's the end of today's episode so uh, we have now a steady supply of clothing it'll take a while until it's uh, fully kicking into motion it's basically now only needing more workers to fully work on out. The next thing that I'm going to uh, improve on in the next couple of episodes is I'm going to crank up the weaver's production because this way I want to produce enough fabric to provide fabric to our housing which will then be a massive step forward again in, sit in the city's happiness because we're going to see the evolution of those homes yet again it's going to be really, really great. But more about that in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying yourself as much as I do. And feel free to drop me comments down below about whatever questions, recommendations. I love to hear from you folks. And of course, leave a thumbs up on that video and consider subscribing. There's daily content coming from my side. And if you like this one, there's a good chance that you like the rest of the stuff as well. There's also a link to the playlist in the description box and links to supporting this channel. There's Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me a Coffee as ways and means to support this one, and I'd be really, really happy if you'd check them out. So, have a wonderful day, everybody, and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.